Hello everybody and welcome to my December 2022 reading wrap up. I have a stack of books here that I've read so far this month so we're going to go through them. Uh, it's currently the 11th of December so some of these I've read a little while back but let's get started. So Dane reads. First we have All Island No Sea. This is a poetry collection by Chris Campbell. He was kind enough to send it to me. I'll read you the title poem from this. I like to with poetry collections read a poem to give you a feel for what, what, what I think or what the style is like. All Island No Sea. Here stands an island without its sea. It lifts its coast, splashes away after dark, leaving behind a seagull squawking above a wave. This crafty island unhooks its boys and leaves on a stormy night. Sails past Norway, takes lumps of salt and seaweed with it. Now audacious island latches onto a larger landmass, waves its flag, used as a sail, hopes to be noticed by larger continents. But relocated, the poor rock weeps itself to sleep, regrets it tried to be something it isn't. It cries so much that when it wakes, with the gulls creeing for fish, fresh water surrounds its dry beaches and crabs and turtles come ashore once more. Waves crash and caress its boundaries as they once had. Island is poor no more and visitors flock to buy postcards. I did enjoy this. I gave it a four out of five. I like Campbell's. Uh, he writes in free verse, which I'm always a fan of. And I just like his way with words as well. Um, I actually interviewed him for my radio show too, which will be on my YouTube at some point or another. Then I read Chucky by John Wyndham. This was a 3.5 out of five for me, but a good one. Um, it's basically about a kid who has an imaginary friend who kind of gives him all kinds of intelligence and all these weird abilities um, and it may, it may or may not be an alien uh, yeah it's just mad um, I think it was just about the right length it was about yeah 150 odd pages in this edition fairly small print any longer and I think it would have started getting tedious but I think it was just about the right length for, for Wyndham to share his ideas there so that was very good then I read The Girl in the Spider's Web by David Lagerkrantz. So this is book four in Stig Larsson's Millennium series. Larsson wrote the original trilogy himself and died before it got published, unfortunately. Lagerkrantz has been kind of tasked with writing a new trilogy that continues it. It's been about 10 years since I read the original book, so it's, you know I couldn't really compare this to those, which was good in a way. It made me like read Lagerkrantz for his own style and whatnot rather than constantly comparing him to Larson. Um, I did eventually kind of fall back into it and picked up with where I left off with the characters and stuff. Some good techie stuff as well. Probably like 3.5 out of 5. Okay, then we have some more John Wyndham. So first off, I read Stowaway to Mars. So this is a novel. Uh, it was written in 1939 under his uh, pen name of John Banyan. And um, it's very prophetic because it prophesizes like man landing on the moon in 1969, although he didn't get all of the details quite right. And in this one, uh, like an eccentric British millionaire aerospace guy sets off to try and land on Mars to be the first person to do so. But they find a stowaway on board and shock horror, it's a woman. Uh, strong 3.5 out of 5 I did enjoy. The ending was a bit lacklustre. The, the stuff I actually enjoyed the most was the stuff on Earth before they even left and then the journey there as well. I then followed that up with John Wyndham's Sleepers of Mars. This was a 4 out of 5. It's a short story collection and I find that Wyndham's at his best with short stories. So we have Sleepers of Mars which follows directly on from Stowaway to Mars and follows the Russians. Worlds to Barter. Invisible Monster which was like sci-fi horror. The Man from Earth and then The Third Vibrator, which has an incredible title. Um, as I say, I think uh, Wyndham is at his best with short stories because he's a really good uh, ideas man. And so that's really why this, this stood out to me. All right, then I picked up Single Spies by Alan Bennett, and this contains an Englishman abroad and a question of attribution. Um, I'm counting it as read, even though I didn't actually read it because I've already read both of those plays individually. Didn't realize that when I ordered it. But yeah, both plays and the book as a whole, four out of five. Then I read The Psychopathology of Everyday Life by Sigmund Freud and you know Freud gets a lot of flack for his ideas being a bit nuts I mean you have the Freudian slip when you say one thing and you mean your mother you know um, but some of his ideas in this were quite cool he's kind of investigating why we forget things why we forget words why we substitute one word for another a lot of stuff like that um, and then like yeah slips of the tongue inadvertent actions forgetting to do something that you meant to do all of that good stuff and um, yeah I did enjoy it I've actually um, I'm giving this to my, my girlfriend, to Shay as well, because she wants to read it, because she's interested in uh, psychology. But yeah, I gave it like a strong 3.5 out of 5. I was expecting it to be a bedtime book, which is what I call it when I have a book that I'm not going to read as my main read, because I'm a bit worried about it getting boring, you know? And um, I ended up listening to it via an audio book from LibriVox, and that made it a lot more enjoyable, I think. So yeah, consider doing that. And then I read The Lady of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the second most recent June book. Uh, it's part of a trilogy. The first one came out in 2022. This one was 2021. 
yeah, sorry, the first one was 2020, this one was 2021, and then another one came out in 2022, uh, which I currently have on, on the way to me, so I'm looking forward to getting to that. I have done a review of this as well. I don't know whether it'll be up by the time you see this. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Probably a week, four out of five. Um, I tend to find with these trilogies that the middle book is always in a bit of a trough, and then it picks back up again by the end book. Um, but yeah, this was set only a few years before the main June books. Um, and so you get Duke Leto Atreides as a main character, and I really like him as a character. Uh, Lady Jessica's in it, a younger Paul, all that good stuff. Would recommend if you're a June fan, especially if you've made it this far into the series. Alrighty folks, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is Dishonesty is the Second Best Policy and Other Rules to Live By by David Mitchell. This is David Mitchell the comedian rather than David Mitchell who wrote Cloud Atlas. And this is a collection of uh, articles that he wrote for, I believe for like The Guardian or The Observer or someone. It is very funny, he takes on like a wide range of different things. One of the things that stood out to me was when he was tackling like arts and what the arts mean to us and he was like railing against why are, cine uh, why are theatre seats so uncomfortable? Which actually reminded me of a, a scene in Peep Show where Mark and Jez go to the theatre on a date with uh, on a double date. Uh, I'm just trying to peel the sticker off here, as you can see. I got this from a charity shop. But yes, it was very, very good. Um, the only real qualm I have about it is with, with like a criticism of the form, which is whenever you publish a collection of newspaper articles, it never particularly feels coherent. Um, it's very much you sort of, you know, dip in and out of it. There's no overall narrative, which is just what happens with that kind of book. But overall, I did still enjoy it. I would heartily recommend it. I gave it a four out of five. All right, just the one book to wrap up for you, and that is The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. This is the latest one that I've listened by audiobook. It was a good old 24 hours long, um, but it was read by different narrators, which kind of made it interesting. I mean, it's, it's an interesting book anyway. It's very much in the David Mitchell school of... Um, you know, like epics that make you think. It asks a lot of questions. I think it was easier for me to follow than some of his other books. It wasn't one where you had all these like jigsaw pieces at the end and you're like, how do these all fit together? Um, it was easier to follow than that, so that was good. Um, and yeah, overall, just a really interesting book. It's got some good themes of uh, like environmentalism and the world that we live in. Uh, you can tell it's influenced by, he spent some time in Japan as well. Really good characterization. It is a hefty old book, but do stick with it. It's worth reading. I gave it a strong 3.5 out of five. Uh, then I read The Guest Cat by Takashi Hiraid. Uh, so this book, quite short and sweet book, it's Japanese in translation. Um, it's about a freelance writer and a cat. Uh, basically this like neighborhood cat adopts them. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I gave it like a 3.5 out of five. My friend Neil, his book group read it and they all hated it. Um, but none of them are freelance writers or as far as I know cat owners so that could be why but yes I did enjoy it and then I read Cimetière by Stephen yeah. King so that's Pet Cemetery in French um, bit of a challenge but you know it was enjoyable um, and like a good challenge and obviously I just really like Pet Cemetery anyway I picked it up from the Catagooms in Paris when I visited Paris in June so that was also good and um, what was I going to say oh yeah what I think is interesting is how it still feels like a Stephen King novel. It's still kind of got his writing style, even though it's it's in translation. So I thought that was quite cool. But yes, probably like a 4.5 out of 5. That's just what Pet Cemetery is in general for me. So yes. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is The Prodigy by Herman Hesse. Um, this is, I guess you would almost call it literary fiction. It's a novel about a kid who's being pressured by his school and his father to go and study really hard and to basically become a priest. Um, and so he's kind of feeling that societal pressure to go out and do well and to succeed. And um, yeah, it's kind of a, I think it's still a thing that a lot of kids today deal with, you know, the pressure they feel from their parents to go out and do shit and to be successful. Um, so yeah, it was kind of interesting read because of that. But I, overall anyway, I did enjoy it. I've just had a little moment where I've realized that I've lost my fucking book. Oh no, here it is, okay, that's good. Um, and yeah, overall, I just thought it was really well written. It's kind of continued to affirm for me that Herman Hess is a, an author that I want to read some more of. This is now my second of his books. Bit of a slow burner, um, but again, it's kind of that literary fiction style. It's kind of done so deliberately. Um, and it is very much like a real life tale as opposed to anything epic fantasy or anything like that, you know. Overall, I gave The Prodigy 
you by Herman Hesse, pretty strong, 3.5 out of 5. Hi guys, just the one book to wrap up today, and that is A Sense of Wonder by John Wyndham, Murray Leinster, and Jack Williamson. It actually com contains three novellas, so Exiles on Asperus by John Wyndham, The Mole Pirate by Murray Leinster, and The Moon Era by Jack Williamson. Overall, each of them was a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5, and so I guess that's what I'll give the thing overall. Uh, I did prefer Wyndham's story, but that's no surprise because I only picked it up because of Wyndham in the first place. But it was nice to discover some other uh, sci-fi authors as well, especially because this was from like the early days. I mean, it even talked in the introduction about the, the concept of uh, science romance, scientific romance, which is what science fiction was kind of called before it became science fiction. I uh, would recommend for a Wyndham completionist or anyone looking to get into classic sci-fi, it's a good place to start. And Wyndham's story, as I say, I mean, it was space jail with Martians in it doing an uprising. What, what's not to like? And then I read Peter Cowensin by Herman Hesse, or Hesse, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, and this was pretty good. It's almost like a coming of age story. It's very, very similar to The Prodigy. Um, and this was his first book. The Prodigy came a little bit later. It is good. Um, it's just not great. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying reading uh, Herman Hesse's stuff, but I just feel like at the moment they're very, very similar in subject matter. Um, they just cover like a normal person's life which can be done really well like John Williams' Stoner was like that and that was my favourite book of the year uh, the year I read that but yeah just okay but uh, 3.5 out of 5 for that alright just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is Dune The Hour of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J Anderson so this is a very satisfying culmination to the what's it called the uh, blah, 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 just the Caladan trilogy uh, it's the newest trilogy by Herbert and Anderson this actually came out uh, in November so only came out last month and um, yeah, the downside to it is that it follows Paul Atreides, but at least it's a younger Paul Atreides before he becomes Mardiv and becomes like a total dickhead. So um, yeah, it's all right. It, it probably was the weaker trilogy ending out of all of the trilogies that I've read by these guys, but I still gave it a strong 3.5 out of 5, and we'll hopefully be doing a review soon. Then I read uh, Anouk Ricard, Anna and Frogger, Completely Boo Boo. So this is a children's book. Uh, Ricard is a French author. I've read some of her stuff in French. I've actually read some of these stories in French. Um, and they're really short. They're like little comics, pretty much, for um, for children. I mean, they probably take, take, take over like four or five pages in this book. Um, I read the whole thing in the bath at my mum's, which, by the way, she's getting rid of, so I'll no longer be able to have baths when I go and visit her. But she did fall over in the bath, so that's probably why. Um, yeah, it was very humorous, very fun. A week four out of five, but I do like the nuclear car stuff. She's one of the authors I'm trying to read everything that they've ever written, and that includes with her both her French stuff and then the English stuff. Then I read The Seven Secrets of Awakening the Highly Effective Four Hour Giant Today by Charlie Mack, Dennis Sweetie, and Frank, aka The Gang. So, this is an Always Sunny in Philadelphia book. This was a gift from my beautiful girlfriend Shay, who is in the bedroom at the moment. Say hi, Shay. Hi. There we go. And um, yeah, this was a Christmas gift. It's, it's pretty good because it, it does a really good job of like parodying and doing a send up of. I've seen so many crappy self help books that are kind of like this. But this is funny and it's doing it deliberately. Um, but yeah, I've read a lot of like, I guess the kind of things this is inspired by. Um, I actually thought when I opened it, I was like, why has Shay got me a shitty self-help book? Um, and then I saw it was always sunny. So then, then all was forgiven. Uh, I think she might be reading this later as well. So we will see what she thinks. I gave it like a four out of five. Um, I don't know if it's written by the same people who actually write the show. But either way, they did a good job of like doing a lot of in-jokes and tie-ins to the show capturing the voices of the characters and stuff it just felt very slightly very slightly off so i don't think it is written by the same people and then finally we have project hail mary by andy weir so um he's the guy who wrote the martian and i also read artemis by him this one deals with like an ex existential threat to the earth there's a thing called astrophage which is like an alien life form that's going to cool down the planet it's kind of stealing heat from the sun um, and our main character has been has kind of volunteered on a suicide mission to go off to a star that's remained unaffected to figure out what we can learn from it so that humanity doesn't have to die. Along the way he meets an alien. Um, he, when it, at the beginning of the book he kind of wakes up in space and he's like, I don't know what's going on. Because um, he's got like kind of amnesia from being in a med medically induced coma. And normally I hate that kind of stuff but I thought it was done pretty well here and did a pretty good job of like slowly but surely allowing the story to unfold. So I would give it uh, probably a 4 out of 5, I think it's Weir's best book so far. 
So there we have it. Those are all of the books that I read in December. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that describe button, subscribe, describe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye, jazz hands. <laughs>